Welcome to another Star Citizen NX Anonymous, and this is a rant. Oh yes, it's a rant. But it's not the typical rant where I go off and tell you how horrible Star Citizen is, because if it was, I wouldn't be playing it so much. I wouldn't be back to doing videos all the time. I wouldn't be back to enjoying it. But there's some things I don't enjoy, and that's griefers. And griefers, griefers just have no role in life other than to... I, I don't know, what are they, challenged mentally to find something to do besides to, well, you know, I could handle it, all right? So this is my point with it this weekend. And I'm going to rant about a couple of things, but I'm going to start and end with griefers. And I had to come over here and I had to file a claim on my ship. I'm getting very animated right now because I'm very upset. I'm not upset because I was griefed, I'm upset because people grief. Now, grief me all you want. I played the game. I know that what you're doing right now is not going to be possible later, so you're pretty much taking advantage of a lack of a mechanic right now, which would be you wouldn't be able to sit outside the armistice zone of Port Olisar and just pick off every single mining ship or every noob that doesn't know how to play the game. Now, if that's the way you get fun, then why don't you go and, you know, I don't, you know, I don't want to be disgusting and I don't want to call you like a potential serial killer down the road because you're probably just normal everyday people that I would be friends with and would just never know that this is something that you do in your pastime. But we are supposed to be a community that is welcoming in new players, right? New players, new players, players to come in and join us and help fund the best damn space simulator ever ever but we're not the best damn space simulator pilots ever because griefers now there's griefers in every game we know that there's just people that have to show how much better they are than other people or you know i could kill you when you're totally defenseless and helpless and aren't even in it for the fight you're just here trying to do a video or maybe it's your first day in the game and currently they can do it because cig doesn't think it's important right so here you are. If CIG, you don't think it's freaking important, <laughs> if you don't think it's important, don't have a free fly weekend to welcome new people in. Because it's just a weekend when the griefers are going to be out and they're going to be like, mmm, fresh meat. You're throwing raw meat into the piranhas. Now, I'm not saying everybody's time, everyone's experience in Star Citizen over the last couple of weeks has been crap. I'm not going to say most people have, but what I am going to tell you is that for every one person that has a shitty experience on their first time out, they're going to tell a lot of friends not to play the game. So you should really, 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 really think hard about inviting new people into the game before you have a way to take care of griefers. Now, yes, we can handle them on our own, get a group of people and go just constantly kill them, put a kill order on them, and every time they come in get them but we're not all always playing the game because honestly it's still in development and there's so many other games to play right now so cig think twice put a couple of turrets put a bunch of crusader security around korea around well around three places three places in general i say if you go to grim x if you go to levski you, you need to fight through it but if you're at cryaster services those two if you're at port alisar and if you're at korea you should be in protected space and if you're going to grief in those locations there should be a risk of you losing your ship and if you lose your ship you have to wait longer for it to be regenerated i don't know so that was my rant number one but you know i'm over it because i'm a big girl i've got my big girl panties on i got griefed i went out i got my my raven and i was owned i wasn't blown up though because I'm not a great combat pilot. I'm just not. I play the game because I enjoy it, not because I'm the best at it. I don't want to be the best at it. I want to enjoy it. And if enjoying it makes me better every day, I'm happy. So yes, we're getting into the prospector again because today I, I deleted my user folder and I upped the graphics to max. I'm getting great frame rate and everything looks so much better. Now I'm leaving the chat open today because, oh wait, wait let me just get my landing gear up. All right, I'm leaving the chat open today because we need to see if there's any griefers, but I'm gonna try my best to sneak out of here. So I'm gonna bring up, yeah, that's it, good. 
point to Damar. Let's get out of the armistice zone. We don't need to, but we will. Let's see if there's anyone out there. Is there? No. I don't really see anyone out there. Alright, and we're off. Alright, so here's the other thing that's bugging me. And you know what? Let's let's get down to the planet's surface and I'll talk to talk a little bit more about that. Oh, that was a little bit of time, but we're down to the planet's surface. So here's the other points I have. This is my other part of my rant. I'm in a spaceship and I need to have the utmost situation awareness. Why the hell are all my instruments above my head instead of in front of me? And yes, I know. I'm going I'm to say this. The HUD's not done yet. Obviously, there's no coordinate system. There's no coordinate system. There's no north, south, east, west. I have no idea what direction I'm flying in. I don't know where I'm going, what I'm... I, frustrating. How do you fly like this? This is ridiculous. Yes, it's got a gorgeous canopy and this is where I think groupthink comes into play. Yeah, Chris goes, no, I, I want this like this. It's got to look good. You know what? The fucking spaceship, excuse me, that will be my 1F, needs to be useful. And right now, with that, <clears throat> that just drives me crazy. The other thing I'm showing you right there is the lights are on inside the cabin. The lights are on inside the cabin. Turn the freaking lights off. You wouldn't drive with them on because when they're on, I can't see out the freaking glass. It reduces the contrast or whatever, the visibility outside. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go take your car out tonight. Wait until it's pitch black. Go for a ride on a dark road and turn the lights on as bright as you can inside your car. Can you see outside? No. So what the hell? Yes, I know. The game is in development. Yes, I know that things will be fleshed out over time. But this should be Game Design 101. If I need situational awareness, I need my instruments in front of me. The HUD... I mean, even the F-35, which has a visor-mounted display and one of the best HUDs out there today, has a beautiful, visible dash or, or instrument panel. In fact, it's all electronic, and the pilot can decide what things are on his instrument panel. And he can set them as favor... Oh my god, this is just so frustrating. I don't understand it. It's Chris is such a visionary, and that's why I love these games. I absolutely love his games. I played Wing Commander forever and ever and ever, and Wing Commander 2 and Wing Commander 3 and Freelancer and Privateer and Privateer 2, oh, even his brother, because Privateer 2 was, of course, Aaron, not him. But all these games were awesome, and right now, today, we need to look at the designs of some of the spacecraft because there's a couple of others that have the same issue and one of them being the Reliant. Get the freaking instrument panels down lower so you can see them. Make them useful. Not everything in the world is going to work on the HUD because you know what? When someone takes out my HUD, if I lose power to my suit, whatever it is, I'm not going to be able to see. So I need that taken care of. I need to go to the grid. I, 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 need, I need a Valium or something because I'm raging right now. But I love the game. I'm going to keep coming back. I think it's being, I think work is being done. And I think our voice needs to be heard on some things. There are a lot of little miscon, you know, a lot of little things that just are missed. And one of those things I've talked about in one of my videos a week ago, which was turrets. What were they thinking, right? So, I, I honestly don't know what to say. I don't, because I, I don't know if they're going to make a change. Now, I've been in CIG headquarters when they were over by um, in Santa Monica by the pier. And I've got a very... Um, I, got a, I got an amazing picture of how Chris and the team works back then. I don't know how they work now. And how Chris worked with the group that was there. And they all seemed to be feeding off each other. And they were really th seemed to be going down a, a way of, of making decisions and coming up with ideas and, mo and working on them. But if you look into any of the jump points, it looks like Chris always has the last word. And it looks like people give Chris what he wants 
and try to build for what Chris wants instead of what makes sense, what is logical, what is reasonable. And I think that, and I talk about this group think, yes, I'm in school, so I'm going to throw things that I learn in school, but I've known about group think for a very, very, very long time. And that's one thing that doesn't happen in my career, the job I have because we think differently at Apple. We're taught to think and debate because through debate, we learn from each other. Through debate, I, I, I can actually formulate better understanding of what you're trying to say or what I'm trying to, to say. You honestly don't know how great your idea is until you try to defend it. And you try to defend it eloquently, maturely, and not too passionately that you step on the other person's toes or are disrespectful, but with enough passion that you're able to look at it and really pick up on what the other people are saying and change it. Groupthink cost the lives of many people in the Bay of Pigs. Groupthink cost the lives of seven astronauts in the Challenger disaster. Groupthink is bad. And What's going on at CIG is that if they don't challenge Chris on certain things, on things that are going to improve gameplay, not the idea that's in his head. I pointed out even in, the, in that video with turrets that Chris always points to the turrets that were being fired by Luke and Han in Episode 4, New Hope. But does he ever realize that they're not actually moving the guns? The guns are being targeted and they're just moving the target onto the pipper and the guns are tracking it. Kind of like the B-29 I pulled up. So even Lucas knew what was going on, but it seems like Chris doesn't. All right, so I'm being critical. I am. But I'm not saying the game sucks. It doesn't. The game is freaking amazing. I mean, look at this. The way that they have mining working. I went prospecting today, and I didn't want to take too long. It was dark. I found out that I had a paper to write, which is what I'm working on as soon as I'm done with this video. And I said, you know what? Let me go out there and see what's out there. And the first thing I find is a 10% titanium rock. Yeah, I found... 15 and 20 before. I'm like, you know what? That's enough. I'll make myself a couple of grand at most, maybe 1500 and I'll go back and I'll be happy and I'll make a profit for today. Otherwise, I could have looked all over this area because I was in the right area. And if I found a 10%, I was probably going to find a 15 or 20 also. So I, I, I find the game moving in the right direction. But now that it's moving in the right direction, I'm getting frustrated that certain things aren't being fixed. And we keep getting excuses for them. You know, I bring up the thing about female models all the time. They did male models. They didn't do female models. It was easy copy and paste or easy co-development, but they chose not to. And now they have to go back and revisit the female model. And that's still not going to be here until January or December, whenever it's going to be. And that's going to be... an, an I'm kinder than most of you. True development on the game started in 2015. I know the inside scoop. I know what was going on at CIG. True development on the game started in 2015. Okay? If you want to challenge me on that, I'm not going to I'm, I'm debate you on it. Because I know certain things behind the scenes that you don't. So, once all the pieces were in play, once... New Regime was in charge of Austin. Once Frankfurt and Manchester were fully online, fully staffed, and in their, in their buildings, in, in their offices, in their permanent offices, that's when development started going full steam. So three years into development, we have a playable alpha of the game, and we have a lot of amazing things that are going on. What we don't have is perfection, and I don't think we're going to have that for some time. I think that's going to be, well, that's going to be sometime in 2020 when beta starts to near a release of some kind. Well, let's take it back to Port Alisar. And you know what? This is pretty good today. We didn't even get interdicted by a pirate. It's been crazy lately. The pirates have been interdicting me like crazy. Two, three times going out to Delamar. 
twice going out to Yella, two or three times going out to Selen. It's been nuts, but it's easy just to point your ship back on course, hit that B key, let yourself spool up, and jump to the next interdiction. Nonetheless, it seems to have been corrected today, if it's possible. So, um, using my new anti-griefing entry into Port Olisar, which is to get in as quickly as possible, point to a potential landing pad, and then sit here and play with the Moby Glass, hoping that it will come up without failing, which it does. I think a lot of things that are being spawned, that are being operated or turned on, like mining, every time a rock spawns, you have that little bit of lag. I think all of those are going to start to be fixed in 3.3 when object container streaming is implemented. If nothing else was implemented in 3.3 but object container streaming, it would make the game so much better. But because, well, we'll talk about that in another video, but because 3.3 has Hurston and its moons and all of its stations and landing areas, I think 3.3 is going to be the real beginning of lots of people playing the game because it won't be the same old, same old that we've been in for the last couple of years. So, yeah, I had a lot to be ranting about. Griefing drives me crazy, and I can brush... Honestly, I could wipe it right off and not think about it again because it doesn't matter in the end. It, it just doesn't matter because... Everything that I do in this particular part of the game is going to be reset October 10th when the next version comes out. And after that, it will be reset again when 3.4 comes out. So anything that negatively happens over here really doesn't have a long-term effect on my gameplay and Star Citizen. What I can say is... It does burn me. It, it makes me burn. It, it lights me up when I think about that first time player that's never been in the game before that gets into an Aurora or has flying one of their, maybe they have a freelancer and they want to do a cargo run for the first time and they get out of Port Alisar just past the Armistice Zone and bang, they're dead. Those are the things that have been pissing me off. And you know, the game the game design, I like. The ship design, I think they're getting a little weird. And I think they need to be thinking more in the lines of reality versus fun, right? You have to have enough reality and enough fun. But also, what doesn't work should be fixed before anything else new is put out. That's what I don't like about their ship pipeline. They're throwing a lot of of crap at us and I mean crap right you're getting a lot of ships that aren't done they're not fully implemented we can't put all the extra equipment on our constellations or anything like that and what's going on is you you're just not even finishing one ship and you're moving on to another one and those are those are the big things that annoy me there's a lot of the constellation that's still not done like you still can't use the merlin in the back of it yet we brought out the 600i which has a lot of things that don't work on it so i'm wondering really do you want to keep bringing out ships without bringing one out that's fully complete or are you still trying to work out the systems and obviously it's the latter they're still trying to work out the systems this is a new person who wants to know what to do in Star Citizen. I point him towards my own website, and I point him towards Board Gamer. I was also going to send him out to one of my friends, but um, we got into a conversation with somebody else about griefing and about the griefing that was going on, and that's what set me off, because it's not just me. And there was this person, and we're going to leave them nameless, Siler, who was... He kept on putting out these big missions, like these big... Um, I forget what the pop-up missions are called because I'm just nuts right now. And when people would come to him, he would just kill them. All right, folks, that's all I have for today's rant. Okay, I'm sorry about it, but 
Um, if you're going to subscribe, please make sure that you click the bell-shaped icon so you get notified of any new videos I put out. And for those of you that like the video, please click the thumbs up button. And if you don't, please just say why and don't say because you suck. Because it has to be constructive, not destructive. And if you want to help out the channel a little bit more, go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Batgirl. And with that said, you all be safe out there and I'll talk to you soon.